Who are you? No one of consequence. I must know. Get used to disappointment. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome to another Goth Academy video and another prediction video for the next episode of Game of Thrones and today we're gonna predict Game of Thrones season 8 episode 4. As usual I'm gonna read out patrons predictions and I'm gonna react to them in real time. Boom, let's go! Let's start with Oknata. The episode begins with an exterior shot of King's Landing, wide shot, then we get into the Red Keep. Boom, Cersei is sitting on the throne. We cut to a close-up of a nameless queen's guard. We see his hair move slightly from a, from a nearby breeze as he turns to look. What is the cause? We cut away to reveal Arya has just sta stabbed Cersei. Credits roll. <laughs> DD come on screen and just stare at us, stare at us without irony for the remaining 116 minutes. Oh. Okay, Brandon. Polar. Daenerys will continue to prove that she's a bad leader and she just gets people who trust her killed. Unsullied in Meereen, Dothraki, in the tactically idiotic charge that was both suicidal and genocidal. Hmm. Hopefully someone on the show finally voices this criticism in some way this week. I think that Daenerys will start to drink her own Kool-Aid. Okay, I won the Great War. They know I saved the city. They know I won the war. The war's not won. I have the dragons. Boom. I'm the big queen, so everybody shut the fuck up. Maybe Arya will be like, uh, excuse me. I'm the one who did the actual uh, winning of the war. You did the uh, losing. <laughs> and then maybe that will be another wedge between the Targaryens and the, and the Starks. If only there was a Targaryen Stark that... Could be a further wedge. Brandon continues. Sansa will insist the North will refuse to fight for Daenerys because even though they would like to be rid of Cersei, they don't want to immediately have them. They just don't want to have a new boss, same as, as old boss. Hmm. So that's another uh, reason for strife. Basically, we have three episodes where this alliance between the Targaryens, the Unsullied, the... Uh, Vale of Arryn, the Northerners, the Tullys, everybody, it has to fall apart. So we've compared this alliance to the World War II alliance between the Soviet Union and the Allied forces against the Nazis. Just the one difference was that when <laughs> a dedicated person planned to assassinate the show's Hitler, boom, she was able to do it. In real history, there were a couple of uh, instances where dedicated people tried and, spoiler alert, failed. But anyway... There was actually one story that not a lot of people know. There was this one guy, I forget his name, that's his name. He was totally politically unaffiliated, went by himself before a speech by Hitler, went to the place, to the pole where he was supposed to, to, to speak uh, next to, cut a hole in the pole, put, out a, put a bomb, timed it exactly, went on a train, on, on his way to Czechoslovakia, I think, but for some reason, I think because Hitler got sick or something, he cut his speech short, went back to his car, and then it exploded when he wasn't there. Boom, everything fell on where he was supposed to be. If only he could jump, vault jump like Arya and had a Valyrian steel dagger. A lot of lives could have been spared. That was, I think, 1940 or 1941. Come on. So anyways, after, <laughs> after the war, East and West, the Iron Curtain, boom, the former allies became adversaries. So similar, a similar thing will happen now. They were allies when they were facing their common enemy. No common enemy now. It's very easy to unite when you have this big bad wolf to worry about. It's not as easy when you have to decide which way you're gonna live now. 
Who's gonna be on top? What will be the, the, the tax structure? How independent will everybody be? Mm. So all these problems will start in episode 4. Anonymous. She thinks that all the predictions that Sansa will be queen, obviously, are stronger than ever, obviously. She said that Sophie Turner said that she kept one prop, a scroll, which turned out to be critical. Hmm? Ooh, I haven't heard of that. But what I didn't mention in the reviews and the Q&As is the burgeoning affection between uh, Sansa and Tyrion. So I predicted uh, two years ago, whatever, that Tyrion will betray Daenerys and move to Sansa. So the, <laughs> the first step has been taken. He likes Sansa, obviously. He thinks maybe they could have uh, worked it out together. She said no, but they still like each other. They hold hands. He hasn't been getting along with Daenerys. He's gonna move to Sansa real soon. And I think his brother too. So the only thing that, uh, that remains to be seen is what will nudge Sansa into deciding that she needs to be queen. Will it be because she wants the North to be independent? Would it be because she can't trust Daenerys or Jon or Cersei? Would it be because one of them die? Would it be because she's nudged there by the Lannisters? <sniffs> Remains to be seen. David Quipper has more of a question than a prediction. But it's an interesting one. I always watch with a few friends, good drinks, good food. It sucks to be the elitist book reader. This doesn't make any sense. Come on, d, &D. His question is, how can he still be a good viewing partner for these cozy evenings despite the show sinking to these levels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was a party pooper also among some of my friends. They were like, whoa, this was so epic. And I was like, no. Arya can't be the one to kill the Night King. But why, dude, bro, come on. I have no good answer. But if you have good answers, please mention in the comments. How do you do it? How do you do it? Darko Ivich, longtime patron. Boom. Hello, Darko. Next episode, the show will surprise all of its viewers with becoming a well-written and well-thought, inspiring piece of art. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cruel. That's cruel. He wants to think what should have happened. He thinks that the White Walkers represent for him the Black Plague that decimated Europe in medieval times. He would have liked to see them sp spread across Westeros, maybe accidentally disappear at some point, leaving everyone just guessing, just guessing why, but planting some ideas about death in everyone's mind. That's beautiful. Do you have any better explanations uh, than just bad guys doing Bad stuff. Dana S. She thinks Arya might suggest Gendry as having claim to the crown. Huh. I also think that Arya and Sansa will end up splitting ways by the end. So maybe that could be casting the first stone. Dave Chandler. He predicts something that makes absolutely no sense in the context of the series as a whole and undoes and leaves dangling multiple story threads built up over eight seasons? Nah. This is such a wild prediction. Implausible this is. Come on. You're way out there. Way out there. Come on, Dave. Nate's cats. Hot pie emerges as the true contender for the Iron Throne backed by Nymeria. Ooh, D&D explained why they featured this plot on the <laughs> line on behind the episode. Nobody was thinking of what Hot Pie, Hot Pie was up to. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good... This is a reference to, why, uh, to their explanation as to why Arya was the one to kill the Night King because nobody was thinking about her. Chief weapon is surprise. Casey Coons has a more serious prediction. Hello, Casey. Boom. Danny's army attacked as they move south, perhaps at the neck, which will bring out the, the Cranog men. That's book stuff, though. I'm not sure. The Golden Company will desert Cersei. Cersei may die at the end of, on the end of episode five, which leaves an entire episode for Danny, John, Bronn, and the remaining Lannisters to cast a happy ending. Tyrion and Sansa may wed or renew their vows, uniting the Lancasters and Tudors, oh, beg pardon, the Lannisters and Starks. 
And if DND, lowercase DND, good job, Casey, are really bad, then Arya, Marys Gendry, ooh. Florian Brucius, this is the best prediction I've seen so far. At the end, George wakes up and it's all a bad dream. Anke has a prediction that Ajax will win the European Champions League. Ooh, I don't know if you watch the European football, soccer, whatever. They are now favored to get into the final after beating 1-0 Tottenham away. And I replied, before last night, Leo Messi golpea contra. Qué golazo, qué descomunal, libre directo. Barca 3 0 victory over Liverpool. I think uh, Barcelona will be favorites, even though I think they're not as good this season as they've been uh, in seasons past. But Messi is just too good. If Messi plays a good game in the final, X stand no chance. Brian C. Morris, John and Danny will not address the fact that they are aunt and nephew, but instead, who has the better claim to the throne? Right, I'm waiting for this uh, topic to, uh, to be raised. Excuse me? Uh, hmm. Somehow all the, bodies, <laughs> all the bodies will just disappear. Shai Golan, long-time patron, boom, fellow Israeli, my name Shai. Danny will perform the Targaryen litmus test on John via Drogon's breath. Good luck, John. At least you'll get warm. Wonder what will happen to the winter now. I hmm. guess it's over. Last, but definitely not least, Jessica. We found out. We found out that way back in season seven, the Unsullied released the lion from under Castle Rock, and he and Imeria have fallen in love. Their relationship brings peace, heals old biases and proves that humans are the worst of all species. Nymeria and the lion become rulers of Westeros, the dragons have shifted their allegiance to their side. The small folk, all vegan, boom. Jessica, are you vegan? Boom, I'm vegan. Be vegan, you should be vegan. Boom. They all live their lives in harmony with animals while the corrupt, rich and powerful are banished forever. People are still hurt by the conclusion of episode three. I decided to move on. I moved on, I'm gonna enjoy episode four. It's gonna be back to politics. Now they want to have three episodes to tie everything up. John and Daenerys splitting up. Sansa squeezing in. Tyrion switching allegiances. And also, all this needs to be a preamble for a changing of the political system from the regular feudal system into a different kind of pyramid where the queen is the absolute ruler and everybody is beneath her and everybody is under her purview. The faith, the maesters, all the lords, they will have to come to the capital, be it King's Landing or a different capital. No longer different seven kingdoms with seven armies. One army under God. God save the queen. Boom. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching. If you want me to react to your predictions for the next couple of episodes, be sure to check our Patreon. Be sure to, pay to check. Be sure to check our Patreon page on patreoncom Academy. The link is in the description. I'll send you a welcome message once you're there. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. I don't know if you've heard about the book The Thrones Effect: How Game of Thrones Conquered Pop Culture. This is a vast collaboration with several other YouTubers to look at the Game of Thrones phenomenon from all kinds of different angles to get a better sense of how it has become this cultural titan and how it has impacted our culture. We take a look from a political point of view, a historical point of view, psychoanalytical point of view. We take a look at Martin's inspirations, at the independent media that has grown organically from YouTubers and from the audience. We pick apart the different arcs, the way that the story deals with magic, the different ways that you can read and watch the same story. All of this in one book. Once you read the whole thing, you get an all-encompassing look about the story to better appreciate it, to lengthen the Game of Thrones experience as the show is winding down. And the link is in the description. You can get it on ebook, you can get it as an audiobook. 
Boom. And you can get it as a print book. It is already a number one bestseller in Amazon in several categories. It's a great read. I also edited this book, so I read all the chapters beforehand and they are fun to read. They're also funny, insightful. You're gonna have a great time reading the whole thing. Hopefully you like my chapter two about the historical and political side and the chapters that I collaborated with Noga on, on the psychoanalytical side. So check out the links in the description. Get your The Thrones Effect book today.